for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now, this is of no return. Our original was very small, <coughs> which was for one person at a time. So we were ready to go with it. They followed them through, that was end. And the door was expanded in this later. Let's have a look. I gotta get that picture. <laughs> the door was very small. This was the staircase that British used up and down. So ships were far. So small canoes were used to convey the blacks into the middle. Now, if you look at this place, where the canoe is just in front, there is something like a concrete which is broken. That one. That was a wall. Which British built from this part of the castle. They built it to that place, then long into the sea. They built that one as a boundary to separate them from the local people. So the locals who were here were then at the back of that wall. So this place was called the White Man's Beach or Abrafum Kuano. But now the wall is broken, so our people are in charge. And if you go through this door, during the time of slave trade, if I get close at it, the place is noisy. If you go through this door during that time, one, you will lose your identity as an African. You will lose your culture, respect, dignity, everything. And from here, most of the captives were taken to North America. Some ended up in Liverpool, England. Some to Bristol, Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago. But those taken to Brazil, Brazilians passed through Elmina Castle, through the hands of the Portuguese. Some Brazilians were taken from Angola, East Africa. As we talk about Suriname, Haiti, Dutch Guyana, Curaçao, most of those islands, those taken, they passed through Elmina Castle, through the hands of the Dutch. And history has said that Brazil received the largest number of slaves. Brazil got 47% of the entire slave from Africa. And Brazil is the second largest black population in the whole world, second to Nigeria. Now, I did not mention Jamaica. Do you know why? Because slaves were not taken from any particular castle to Jamaica. No. Jamaica was founded as a result of individual enslaved Africans who rebel against European plantation owners on the farms, on the British colonies. So if you are in maybe Barbados, you are in wherever and you are fighting, you will be taken from there to Jamaica. So they were not taken from this particular party, they were selected from different races to Jamaica. Hold on, again, let me say that. So Jamaicans were not taken direct, Jamaica, slaves to Jamaica were not taken directly from any particular castle. But they were individual what? captives who were fighting Europeans on the farms, in the plantations. All over, in all the, the Car Caribbean, the West Caribbean, Indies, Canada. Brazil, the Americas. Yes. So and Jamaica was the place to carry the, the rebellious ones, the fighters. Exactly. Okay. They were taken there as a form of punishment. That is why oh. up to now... Oh, oh. damn! They are not the easy type. <laughs> Would you, say that again? <laughs> you say that's that why, why the Jamaicans up to today. Yes. 21st century. Yes. They, they are not the easy type. They are very, very 
uh, I, I don't know how to aggressive. say aggressive they are aggressive <laughs> they are very aggressive yo very there's hard. so many chills running through my body right now that so that's it's crazy it's crazy that is why they say out of many we are one yeah out of many one people that's our motto yeah, yeah that's motto because they were picked from different places and brought to jamaica and brought to jamaica Jamaica man, I be a bad slave with over this one. We're not yeah. take no right. talk. I'll give you some time to take for this. Yes. Okay. Again, yes, cutting edge with there with you. So as me I tell you, say how oh, Kingston full up a pure of excitement, you know. All the way here I go on at the drag grand down run everything. Every corner Jamaica. I feel hear what me I say. Kingston is where it's at. <laughs> But I tell you, every car out of here, I have to tell you this. Kids' story is where it's at, man. I, I mean, the amount of excitement when we see that. I say, you know, when you see like New Year's Eve night, especially like our downtown, you know, because we want to heal up Jaria and we want to heal up the Ministry of Culture, Bob's Grange, and Lego. Lego, hard work in Lego. Transform. I will wire up Julian Jingles anyway, I'm there, you know, because that was one of him vision for see the Bead Street. For those of you who don't know the Bead Street, the Bead Street is Aaron Street. And we can't talk, we can't say it start from North Street, go right down to North Parade. Because they saw North Parade, Randy's the day they saw. And beside Randy's, they have. You did have mu the, the African Museum, Gregory Shop, and up more, you did have Tough Gang, soul to soul label with wheelers. Cross the other side of the road at King Street Corner, so you did have Derek Carriott. Then coming up the road on Art Street, uh, Aaron Street, you have Asata Man, you have Pablo Mo pa Augustus Pablo, you have Lee Scratch, you have Prince Buster, you still have Lego down there with him studio. Yeah, and you have other stores. You have Cross that side, you have Big Yard, Cash and Carry with, 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 with Bonnie Wheeler, Dennis Brown, and um, I'm, I think, uh, who three of them again? Dennis Brown, Big Youth, I think Big Youth, Dennis Brown, yeah, and Bonnie Wheeler. Yeah, so, the other day, Sunday, it was, it was wonderful to see um, the Beat Street from North Street go right down to Charles Street, that's all, with Pier Tent. With, with pure upscale craft, art and craft and food, with tabling, that are, I saw we know it. Like when you go to Europe and them places, you know, I, when you go to South Africa, you see them have like street side cafe, street side cafe, where even in New York, if you go to Soho, for those of you who know, long in Soho, they saw, you know, you go to Europe. All over Europe, every city in Europe you go, you see a street side cafe. But they know them have some road where them block off, where them don't make car and traffic go down on them road there. Them just have tent there somewhere. People are selling all different kind of things. And that, it, it reminds me of it when I, Sunday when I go down a, down a, down a Orange Street there. It reminds me of that kind of ambience where food and craft and all different kind of people, you know, it, it was nice. And then in the evening, the big concert, the Dennis Brown tribute, it was wonderful, wonderful, man, wonderful, wonderful, may I tell you. I think we, I think Lego them, even though them have this thing um, of carrying, like them have trips, where them tourist trips down there, but that street, Crafting should be a, a, a mainstay. I don't know them would do it still, but that street crafting is something where we need a whole lot more in a Jamaica, in a different location, different places. You just block off certain street on a Sunday or a Saturday evening. You block off certain street and you just have tents there. You, 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 you rent the tent them and you have really nice. Jamaican authentic art and craft, you know, fried dumpling and hockey and all the different things them where Jamaica offer. And it just mellow, it just nice. 
Because, you know, sometimes you have bigger places like Rubies and Glorias and all them places. But when you have it in the street, man, it have an ambience and you have the big music. Music are thumped down the street. I tell you, it's sweet. So why uh, you look, all the people them who are responsible for putting that together because yes, it it, it, it have a vibes. It really have a vibes. Me love it. I'm a feature of the ministry of culture. You know, Bob say she do a wonderful work because she understand the music. She did the music for years and she needs to continue it. I hope Lego. I hope Julian and Jaria with 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 Ibo and all these ones who are responsible. There's many more there, but I them one them I really can't remember you know. But yes, nice, nice. And as we speak, there's an award taking place right now in the, the sports center. So now I hear so thousands of people up there pack up the plates. Okay, we are continuing the journey as so now. Because you always tell it says, even though we are talking about the music, we still incorporate Black History Month. And even though we talk about Black History Month, we still incorporate the music because the music is also Black History. The music, Jamaican music is Black History. Man, the revolutionary statement. Everybody are twisty, 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 twisty. I never realize where I go on that so now. Because like, they like them who are damp now. You know, manifestation and progress. They are twisty, 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 twisty all over the place. They are twisty, twisty, and fashion this and fashion that. Lacks like, of fashion statement. I don't know if you know that. This is out of Ghana. Bridging. Here we go. Rocky the Wooni. Cyan man, the Wooni. Rocky the Wooni. Continue the journey, you know. Stay poor. Yes, a serious thing. We're not stay poor. Pat Clark, coming at this. Welcome to Jamaican Roots and Culture. I'm your host, Pat Clark. The drums have kept pace with Jamaican history ever since the first Africans were enslaved on the island. It is therefore not surprising that Jamaican drums have predominantly African origins. During slavery, drumming was often banned because the white colonizers were offended by the sounds of the drum and feared its power. The drum was used by the enslaved Africans to communicate in ways the whites could not understand and so could be used to incite unrest and cause revolt. But no amount of prohibition could permanently silence the sounds of the Jamaican drum. Drumming played a vital role in the recreation of the enslaved Africans. It featured prominently in their worship and in their celebrations. When necessary, drums were dismantled after use to avoid detection by the authorities. Popular music in Jamaica today often uses a traditional Jamaican drum alongside American-style drum kits and computerized drum machines. It is in the area of folk music and or traditional folk forms that African-derived drums and drumming have retained their supremacy. The drums also feature prominently in Jamaica's indigenous music, the reggae music. Jamaicans have drawn on the use of all drum types which originated in different parts of Africa. Some of these types have been modified depending on the raw material available for their construction in Jamaica. Some basic African drums from which we've derived our own drums in Jamaica are the bass, the fonde, and the kete drums. These three drums originated in Buru music, a recreational dance and drumming style derived from Africa. Buru has had a great influence on Rastafarian Nyabingi drumming, in which the three drums are collectively known as the harp. The bass drum, also called the thunder, is a double-headed drum played with a padded stick. It underpins the music with a steady, regular stroke on the first and third beat. The bass player will occasionally syncopate the stroke. The funde is a cylindrical, single-headed drum 
played with the hands. It carries the heartbeat rhythm, which is the essence of the Nyabingi music. Because of the importance of keeping the heartbeat rhythm going, the funde player does not improvise much. The kete or repeater drum is the smallest of the three and the highest in pitch. It too is a single-sided cylindrical drum played with the hands. The kete player plays on the second and fourth beat and does a lot of improvisation. The gombe drum is a single-sided square Jamaican drum on legs used mainly by the maroons. It is built with a smaller drum inside called the inner baby. The gombe is played with the hands. The maroons also use bass and repeater drums. Their repeater is round and is played with sticks. In Jamaica, we also use kumina drums. These include the bandu and plain cast drums. Kumina is considered to be the most African of all the Jamaican folk forms. It's a dance ritual that has both sacred and secular elements. On its sacred side, it focuses on communication with ancestral spirits, with spirit possession being a manifestation of this communication. The Kumina tradition is strongest in the parish of St. Thomas, where it was originally practiced by African indentured laborers who came to Jamaica after the abolition of slavery. Before kumina drums are made, libation of rum is poured to appease the spirits of the wood and the goat skin. Newly made drums are consecrated by rubbing rum and sometimes sugar and water into the drum skin. Drummers sit astride the drums and use their heels as well as fingers and hands to change the pitch and tone of the drums. A second player sits on the back of the drum and plays a different rhythm on the side of the drum with sticks known as kata tick. The bandu is considered to be a male drum. It is about 20 inches long and about 14 inches in diameter. It is a single-sided drum played with the hands. The playing cast is considered female and is higher in pitch. It resembles the bandu, but it is a bit smaller. The player executes more complex rhythms than those of the bandu. The rhythms of the playing cast are used to summon the spirits generally and also to communicate with specific spirits. Different rhythms will call different spirits. The tambo is another important drum used in Jamaica. In former times, the tambo drum functioned similarly to the kumina drums. It was used to communicate with ancestors long gone. The drum gave its name to a dance music in the parish of Trelawney, where indentured Africans also settled. Kumina and tambo both seem to share Congo origins, but tambo is now done mostly for entertainment. The main player sits astride the drum, uses the heel to vary pitch while playing with the hands while another player beats kata sticks on the side of the drum. The Jamaican drum has come a long way in terms of being accepted by society. Traditional drums are now widely used to accompany singing in Roman Catholic and Anglican services. That would have been absolutely a no-no in colonial times. The rhythm of Jamaican traditional drum is mesmerizing. They can take you somewhere that feels slightly outside of yourself. A great feeling. The Jamaican drums can take you on a drug-free musical high. And now to end the Jamaican roots and culture, we share a popular Jamaican quotation. A people without the knowledge of their past is like a tree without roots. The words of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. For Jamaican Roots and Culture, I'm Pat Clark. Yeah, that was Pat Clark giving us a listening drums and all the music. Ba- you know, some music band are key and roll. Because the women, them in slavery times. We are talking about science and people are tell Science are not just metal and steel, you know, and computer, you know, but one of the reasons why them usually ban the key and roll or can roll with the music call it is because the old slave women them used to send message in them ear. Depending on how them can roll them ear and going out the field, 
the men them in the field could have know what had take place in the house when them for make certain move when them for start burn down the plantation and all them something they just by looking upon them can run at them here just like the drum when them beat the drum it send a message you know the first time i see african do that i was marvel and taken aback them call it the talking drum you beat the drum it's like a telephone so we know these things exist. I don't know how much people know that exist, but it's not no it's not no spirit thing working. It's a cultural expression where the can roar. It's like certain 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 places in a South America and S- Central America, them weave cloth and them send message in at the cloth. Them send message in at the cloth, depending on the weave. In a Nigeria, a woman status is how oh, she tie her ear. You know, you can't tell if she's poor, if she's married, if she's of high standing, if she's a noble, just by how oh, she plat how oh, she wrap her head. So there's a sort of science we call it. Anyway, we have a lady I know, I never know noble lady on the phone, you know, who Center for Reparation Research, University of the West Indies. They have an Africa appreciation day and reparation reasoning. And then we hope so we kind of spur up some form of, what we call it now, investigation in our mind. You know, if we really go investigate certain things, because really and truly, we're not a serious problem. We're not a very serious problem. And this is the only way we know to do it. The only way we know to do it. And... Soon they are there again too. Today is Thursday. Today is the last day of this month of February. Uh, the year is so done. Believe you me. I'll step in razor. The art of war. 2 to 5, 4 to 5 on IRFM. Every Thursday. Whether we're there or not. And we can play the omnipresent thing too. Because so we never there two weeks ago, we never there. You still hear the program from a different place in a different time space. Oh, So we there, yeah, yeah. So we there, you know them we there. You know, so we are the forward there next week, different month, with the cutting edge from ten to two, with the matrix in the building. Why matrix? Every time I turn on I refer my you, you morning, noon, and night, I hear you as well. Are you around the place? Are you around the place at all, man? <laughs> yeah, I did. Tony Harry had a man in me, you have a Tony Harry after that, but so what we had? Eh? You are around the place? Uh, you are around the place? Why the place might run you? Yes, why it run you? 